Thank you for watching another video on DP Tubs. Today we're going to be working on a fiberglass crack that has a little lack of support underneath that's fluctuating a little bit. So we're going to go ahead and drill some holes and inject some foam before we do the fiberglass repair with some resin and mat. So I'm going to start out the preparation by taping off the area. This is not necessary. It just helps me kind of stay within the area with the sanding. The rest of the tub is in pretty decent condition, so I'm going to do whatever I can to limit any uh, unnecessary damage to the existing surface. So I'm going to go ahead and start drilling the hole. Usually I'll um, just drill a big enough hole that's going to fit the tip of the foam and uh, the little nozzle at the end. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do this right now. I'm just drilling the hole just through the fiberglass. Right below it there's a substrate and I don't want to penetrate that right now, so I'm just going to fill in. Um, the gap in between the substrate and the fiberglass unit. All right, so the holes are drilled. As you can see, I've already put some foam in and I'm just gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna inject a little bit more. As you can see, the nozzle fits right in the hole. One way to know that the foam is actually pushing up against the fiberglass bottom is that when you inject it, it'll start coming through the other holes. That way you know it's starting to fill up. So as you can see here, I'm injecting and then it's coming through, pushing up through the other hole. So now I'm just going to start sanding it. I'm using it about 120 grit just to wipe it up, sand it down just within that area because I just want to kind of scuff it up before I'm ready to put down the fiberglass resin. So I'm removing the tape here a little bit because I noticed that the tape line was right on that other hole. So I want to be able to sand at least a half inch or so around the holes so that way I get some good adhesion with the fiberglass resin. Alright, so now I'm going to start getting all the material ready for the resin. I've got the Bondo fiberglass resin, I've got the hardener that comes with it, and I've got a mixing cup, the fiberglass mat, and the brush. I do have a list of all the items uh, in my description box, so you guys can check out all those links if you want to order them yourself. So I'm going to be mixing up about a good 4 ounces of resin. So for every ounce, I add 10 drops of the hardener. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I mix in between every 10 drops, I'll go ahead and mix. So I'll go 10 drops, mix, 10 drops, mix until I've got them all. And then I've noticed the thicker or the more fiberglass resin I have and mix, the quicker it does heat up and, and cure and dry. So now I'm going to go ahead and take some of the resin and just dab it on the surface so that way when I put down my fiberglass mat it will stick to the surface a little bit better and then I'll go ahead and put the resin on top of the mat and brush it. Generally I'll dab in the resin onto the mat and then I'll brush from center out. Now remember, the tape is not necessary. That's just something I do. It's just kind of a little reminder for me to not get sloppy. So I'm gonna go ahead and dab on to the, um, gonna dab on the resin onto the mat, and then I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit more in the middle and then brush out. 
and then after this I'll get ready for the Bondo glass. So now I've already waited. You can see one of the things I do is leave the material in the cup and look at look how hard it gets. And then I start tapping it onto the surface. Usually the surface will take longer because it's thinner when it's applied, but overall it'll probably take about a good hour. You can use a heat gun to speed up the process as well. And then I'm gonna go ahead and tape off the area. That way I can get ready to start putting on the Bondo glass. And like I said, I put the tape down just to kind of help guide me because the rest of the tub is in pretty decent shape. Alright, so here's the Bondo glass, and keep in mind this comes with a cream hardener, so I'm just going to get some out. The Bondo glass I like just because I like to use it for some added reinforcement. It's got some short strand hairs in it that once hardened it kind of helps make sure the crack doesn't reappear. So I'll go ahead and apply a bead across the diameter of, of the Bondo glass, and I'll go ahead and mix it up. Now remember, always fold it. I've learned from Bad Chad to try your best to fold it on one side. Uh, of the spreader. Also keep in mind that you can be generous with your Bondo glass. Uh, just stay within like this area but you could be generous with it because it's okay to use more Bondo glass or more putty because it's much cheaper than time. So if it's gonna save you time go ahead and use more of the material. So now I'm taking 120 grit on my orbital sander and I'm just running it over the Bondo glass, just kind of scuffing it up a little bit, uh, feathering down the edges before I apply the putty. So here I am, I'm gonna go ahead and start taping off around the Bondo glass. I'm gonna get ready to put down the actual Bondo putty to smoothen things out. And I might put a coat or two on here. Like I said, you could be generous with applying it. So now I'm gonna mix up the putty and then I'm gonna put the hardener right across the diameter of it. Here I'm using the high performance Bondo, which this will help smoothen it out. And I might do a coat or two. Sometimes with the Bondo, I don't sand in between uh, just because I'm gonna sand down pretty hard on top of it. So as you guys know, I watch Bad Chad and sometimes he doesn't always sand in between every coat. He just basically puts it on, then does a good sanding to smooth everything out.
Alright, so now that everything is feathered down nice and smooth, I'm gonna go ahead and spray on uh, the appliance, the Rust-Oleum appliance spray, which is the best matching white that you'll find to an existing tub. So I'll go ahead and do that. Some may be asking, oh, how come you didn't spray primer? On this tub, I chose not to do primer just because it's an original tub. Uh, it wasn't coated before and I just wanted to reduce any overspray from the primer around the repair and uh, because I could always come back and just slightly buff and polish or clay the any overspray or mist around the repair of the appliance spray coating. 